So you want to learn to use Blender's grease pencil. It's a powerful tool, but that means it's confusing, right? Not today. Make sure to stick around to the end for a quick demonstration because I'm going to show you how to get started with Blender's grease pencil, including animation, in nine minutes right now. Let's go. You can easily start a new grease pencil drawing or animation two ways. Way one, when Blender starts up, select the 2D animation workspace and start drawing. Super simple. Way two, start a new Blender file in the general workspace, delete on cube, unless you don't already, like mine, then hit Shift A, find grease pencil, and add a blank. Do yourself a favor and immediately rename that bad boy to something memorable. Pastulio. This method works well for inserting drawings into 3D scenes and is a bit more advanced since you'll need to know how to position a camera in Blender. There's a beginner-friendly camera tutorial in the description. Go check it out. Justin is awesome. Alternatively, with your cursor in the 3D viewport, you could just hit one on your numpad to go into orthographic view, but this gives you less control than placing a camera. Once you've started a new 2D animation or added a blank grease pencil object to your scene, things get confusing. Or they would if I wasn't going to make it crystal clear right now. When switching between workspaces, if you do not see draw mode, you do not have your grease pencil object selected. You must have your grease pencil object selected and be in draw mode to draw. This kind of makes sense, and this is where we need to be. Now, draw mode. At the top of the draw mode workspace, you'll see the top panel. Here you can see the brush type, material list, color attribute, radius, which is your brush size, strength, which is your opacity, and some brush settings. We won't worry about the advanced or cursor tabs right now, but we will look at stroke in a minute. Above the brush and material area, we see several buttons, but for now we're only interested in these two. When this, draw strokes on back, is on, your strokes will be placed under existing strokes, which is very useful. When this one, auto giant vertices, is on, Blender will close any strokes that you make automatically. I recommend right-clicking both of them and assigning them to quick favorites like so, that way you can toggle them easily. These little bullseye looking things right here are for toggling pen pressure on and off if you're using a tablet. To start with, leave the brush and material alone. I recommend leaving your radius at 20 and setting your strength to 1. If you're using a tablet, enable pen pressure for the radius only to start. Now go into the stroke menu and at the bottom, enable smooth stroke. Turn it down to 10 and then disable it again. This allows you to hold shift while drawing and get a very smooth stroke. We only need three tools to start this off, the draw tool, the fill tool, and the erase tool. If you can't see these tools on your left over, no, then hit T on your keyboard and they shall appear. Your draw tool lets you draw, your fill tool will fill in and close strokes. You need to double click the fill tool because clicking once will bring up a tool that enlarges the area it will fill. Click it a second time to confirm. And your erase tool will erase by either dissolving, deleting points, or deleting entire strokes. I prefer to use strokes for the eraser, but your mileage may vary. And if you do decide to play around with the shape presets over here in the toolbar, just hit shift before drawing them, then hit enter to confirm. Layers. Anyone familiar with digital drawing software is gonna know about layers and how important they are. Blender has decided to put grease pencil layers under object data properties. This little squiggly thing right here. I don't know, grease pencil should be called layers. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. There is a hotkey to access the layers panel while you're working, so don't worry, but we'll come to that. Like layers in other 2D software, the layer on top of the stack covers the layers beneath it. Pretty straightforward. Add layers as needed with the plus and minus icons and rearrange their order with the up and down arrows. Several special options appear in the layer specials menu. This little disclosure triangle right now. I recommend turning on auto lock and active layers right at the start since it's off by default. Auto lock prevents you from drawing on or erasing things accidentally. In this menu, you can duplicate a layer with its information intact by clicking duplicate or duplicate an empty version of the same layer by clicking duplicate empty keyframes. This is really useful if you want to create a similar layer without needing to set it up all over again. You can also merge layers together to simplify the stack. Below this is the opacity and blend mode section where you can change transparency and use things like multiply and hard light. This little use lights box we're going to shut off for now. It makes this layer reactive to lights in Blender in 3D space and we don't need that right now. Below that is the mask section where you can hide parts of the layer by using another layer to mask it as shown here. The rest of this panel will be explored in detail in a later tutorial. For now, you have all you need to get started using layers. Here's a summary of the object data properties. Feel free to pause it here, but I only got like two minutes, so I gotta go. Colors. Coloring comes in two flavors for grease pencil, materials and color attributes. Materials are useful because you can adjust them on the fly at any stage in the project. They're more time consuming to set up, but their flexibility makes them worth it. Color attributes, on the other hand, act like your standard 2D drawing palette. And once a mark is made, it can't be adjusted later, only erased. Use whichever best suits your needs. Let's start with materials. To create a new material, navigate to the material properties tab right now. Yeah. Unlike the layers tab, their order from top to bottom doesn't matter for the drawing. It only matters for their order in the material picker, which also has a hotkey we'll cover later. Click the plus icon to create a new material slot, then click new to add a new actual material. Give your material a name, and now we can customize it. You can choose to have the material be only a line, only a fill, or both, and you can customize the color for each. The holdout box means that this material will be invisible and will make strokes and fills below it invisible as well. 
if they're in the same grease pencil object. You can make them totally invisible by making their base color black. Self overlap will have an accumulative effect only on continuous transparent strokes, like so. Sometimes the fill will start off being transparent, which looks like this. So make sure to slide that alpha value up to one for a solid fill unless you want it transparent. Color attributes are similar to regular 2D drawing software. You can make marks and choose colors. Unlike materials though, color attribute strokes are permanent, meaning if you want to change them, you need to erase them and start over. To switch from using a material to a color attribute, you need to go to the menu and select this button where you can then select your drawing color from the color wheel and use your tools as before. To select a color from the palette selection down below, you need to hover over the color you want, press Ctrl C to copy it, and you can then paste it onto the active color in the color picker. Don't ask me why you're double clicking it doesn't work. It just doesn't, dang it. You can alternate between material and color attribute modes while working on any layer. It doesn't need to be one or the other. If you want to ensure that you don't switch between them, click the little pin icon yeah, to lock the mode to the brush you're using. Here's a summary of the colors. Once again, feel free to pause it, but we are almost there. Animation. In the 2D animation workspace, the bottom shows the dope sheet, yeah, which contains all of your layers and the timeline, yeah, which allows you to play the animation. By default, the play button is bound to your space bar. It's a good idea to go into the output properties tab yeah, and set the frame rate yeah, to 24 frames per second, which is standard for animation. Then go to view layer properties yeah, and enable the Z pass, which ensures that your grease pencil strokes will render correctly. You need to have auto keyframe on, which is this button. Yeah, or your drawing either won't show up or it'll replace itself. With auto keyframe on, you can draw on one frame, move a few frames over and draw again, and then repeat this for as many frames as your animation needs. You can adjust the length of your animation by scrolling this value here or entering a number. Remember that every 24 frames equals one second of animation. Every layer also has onion skinning settings, which enable you to see the most recent drawings on either side of your current frame, as shown here. Yeah. Green is the drawing before and blue is the drawing coming after the active frame. You can customize these colors as well as the opacity. Yeah. If for some reason you cannot see your onion skin, go up to the show overlays button yeah, and make sure that onion skin is checked. If it is checked and you still can't see your onion skins, make sure you are in either solid or material preview modes, which are yeah, and yeah, respectively. And that's seven minutes, so here's an example from start to finish. I'm gonna do this the easy way. New 2D animation. These layers are fine, but I wanna add a highlight and a shadow layer underneath my lines layer. New layer set to multiply and masked by the fill layer would be my shadows around 35% opaque. Another new layer, call it highlight, set to add, masked by fill again, about 35% opaque. Now I'm gonna draw a circle using this shape here. Hold shift to drag it out, that's good. Hit enter to confirm. I'm gonna fill this with the default fill, so I'll hit the material hotkey U to bring up the menu, select the material I want, solid fill, good. Then I'll use the layers hotkey Y to go to my fill layer, select the fill bucket, and double click within the circle. Good. I'll use Y again to go to my shadow layer, select the drawing tool, and add a terminator shadow here, nice and smooth by holding down shift. Then use Y to go to the highlight layer and add a highlight at the top. I'm not having to change my materials here because the shadow and highlight layers are set to different blend modes. Now I'll hit Y to go to my lines layer again, hit U to select my black lines, and then I'll draw a little face on frame one, then select the keyframe diamond here in the dope sheet, hit shift and D together to duplicate the frames over to frame four. You can see which frame you're currently hovering over by looking. Yeah. Then erase the eyes. Notice the green onion skin showing the previous drawing. I'll change a bit here and then duplicate the keyframes again, this time to frame eight. Erase the eyes and mouth and change it. Good. And then I'll duplicate that a couple more times. And there it is. The essence of animating using grease pencil and blender in under nine minutes. It's remarkably easy to use. You just got to know where stuff is. And now you know. If you end up making anything with blender as a result of this, tag me on Instagram at moltedbolt underscore. I'd love to see your creations. And if this was helpful at all, leave it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon.